Do you think this affects the team at all? You know, I think it can, uh, whether it's negative or positive, is up to the team. Mike, when you see the players react the way they did against Ivan and not being here, did that, was that say anything to you? Um, surprised I'm around these guys every day. I'm, I'm surprised by very little that they do or say. Coach Tomlin immediately after practice today. It is Thursday, still no Le'Veon Bell here at the UPMC Rooney Sports Complex. And joining me now is Bob Labriola Labs. I think based on the very two, quick two minute maybe uh, media session with Coach Tomlin after practice, nothing has changed in his mind. He also said, quote, my level of disappointment is never a way to approach business. Would not give uh, maybe the fancy quote that everybody was looking for and said, you know, he doesn't communicate through agents either. No, and, you know, Mike Tomlin is handling this, I think, in a way that he perceives is best for the current team to get the job done. And in his mind, the job is going to Cleveland and beating the Browns in, in the regular season opener. If he would say, for example, I'm very disappointed that Le'Veon Bell isn't here, then that sends a message to James Conner and maybe some other guys that maybe they aren't uh, in the coach's mind, capable of doing or contributing what Le'Veon Bell would do or contribute. And even though that could be true, as the coach, you don't want to plant seeds of doubt into players uh, before they're about to go out and perform. So, you know, you just, you don't, you don't verbalize that. It's, it's not productive uh, in any way to do that, and, and, he, and he doesn't. Um, the other thing that I thought was significant uh, from that little session had to do with when he was asked whether um, uh, the agent, I forget his name, Le'Veon Bell's agent, uh, had contacted the, the Steelers about and to talk about uh, Le'Veon Bell's workload. Uh, he said, I don't talk to agents about players' workloads. I'll talk to the players about the players' workload. So, um, you know, I, I think that it's pretty much, I won't say he's stonewalling it, um, but Mike Tomlin is trying to do his best to uh, contain this issue because here we are, it's now Thursday. This has been four full days of talking about this situation. Um, you know, I thought maybe when you were going to open the show, you would say, you know, here we are. Uh, it's uh, the fourth day of the Steelers held hostage, you know, <laughs> Le'Veon Bell, like they, they did on Nightline uh, when they would, um, you know, do a continuing uh, issue like the Iranian hostage situation. But I mean, that's, that's what it feels like. It's every day, it's the same thing, the same topic. And I, I really think that he is trying to do his best to turn the focus towards the Browns be publicly because that's what he's doing, I guarantee you, in meetings and practice sessions and those things when it's just him and the team. All right, well, let's turn our attention now to the Steelers practice. As you saw from that video a little bit ago, it was moved indoors due to weather, but the good news is there's still just one player on the Steelers practice report. The bad news, however, is that Vance McDonald has taken a step back. He was limited on Wednesday today. As you can see here, he did not practice lab. So I think until we see what McDonald is able to do tomorrow on Friday, kind of that last day where we really get a good, get a good gauge before the Steelers issue their status report for the game is when we'll know if we'll see him or not in Cleveland. Yeah, Mike Tomlin often talks about during his uh, news conferences on Tuesday when he uh, details the injury report, he will say, you know, we'll, we'll, they will participate and then we'll see how they react to that participation and let that partici participation be our guide in terms of availability for the game. Well, what uh, Vance McDonald's uh, participation is indicating is that he is not uh, moving in a way that would indicate that he's going to be ready for Sunday. Uh, you practice, uh, he was limited yesterday, Wednesday, did not practice at all Thursday, so the foot apparently did not respond well to the work. The other thing I would suggest, though, if there's one small caveat, I would throw this out. Uh, since they moved indoors today, it was on turf, and so there could have been uh, an interest in keeping Vance McDonald from practicing on the turf because turf is more difficult or tougher on joints, feet, those kind of things. So we will have to see tomorrow how it turns out if they're on the grass. Um, but I'm not real optimistic based on what we've seen the last two days. All right, today is Coordinator Thursday, and we had a chance to hear from defensive coordinator Keith Butler facing a Todd Haley offense. Yeah, it's been long enough. You know what I mean? It, uh... 
it's, it's going to be interesting to see how we play. Uh, it, uh, I'm kind of encouraged, but we'll see see what uh, goes on on the field. All right, and uh, Keith Butler also went on to say labs during uh, uh, the earlier portion of his media availability that, you know, until we play a few games and we see what we have out there, we saw a lot of that dollar defense at training camp, then not a lot in the preseason. You don't want to put too much on tape in terms of a game plan. So it'll be interesting to see what we see Sunday for game one, the one that counts. Right, and it's also, you know, it is the opener, and you, you want to keep it in terms of the plan. You want to keep it, I won't say simple, but in t basic enough that the players that you put out there are able to play fast. They're not out there trying to think, remember their assignments, those kind of things. I mean, I I'm not saying it's going to be really basic vanilla defense on Sunday in Cleveland, uh, but I do think that what Keith Butler will be trying to do is really concentrate and focus on the things that he has seen his players, his units do well either in preseason games or in practices during training camp and then here at the South Side. And even cornerback Artie Burns was saying earlier today in the locker room, you know you're facing Todd Haley, you know what he'd like to do here. Of course, he has a different cast of characters, different personnel to work with, but you're going to see some of those tendencies as well. Right, and I'm sure, and I, you know, I know Mike Tomlin said he didn't watch Hard Knocks, and maybe I believe him or maybe I don't, um, <laughs> but I, I guarantee you the players did. You know, I mean, it's... If nothing else, it's entertainment. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, th I think that I'm not saying that you use that as a scouting tool necessarily. Certainly the time that the, the uh, players spent here uh, during the Todd Haley era as offensive coordinator will be more valuable, a more valuable resource for them as they go into Sunday. But again, the personnel that Todd Haley is going to have on Sunday is going to be different than the personnel he had here. So, um you know, we'll have to see. I don't. Uh, you may be able to glean some things from it, but I don't know that uh, there's there's a significant advantage either one way or the other with that. All right, Labs. Thanks so much for joining to me joining me today. Time for a quick break. When we return, Tunch Ilkin joins me on set for his scouting report. It is time now to talk about the Cleveland Browns and who better to do that than Tunch Ilkin. He's joining me now for your Cirrus XM scouting report. You know, Miss, it's really interesting. And Let's start with the offense. This is a new Cleveland Browns team. There's a lot of new stars. There's a lot of new faces. Uh, of course, Todd Haley, uh, the new offensive coordinator. Let's start with the offense. You know, uh, the Steelers always want to stop the run, and to stop the run, you got to stop Carlos Hyde. Like when you look at Carlos Hyde, he is compact, six foot two thirty. He's very quick. He finishes well, and he's got a devastating uh, stiff arm. I mean, he loves to run over guys. Watch the way he finds that hole. Great stiff arm there. Gets to the outside. He's got the speed once he's in the secondary. So here's a little delay, and he just runs through guys and one of the things that you really respect about him is he's always fallen forward. He also has great vision as witnessed on this play. Does a great job of cutting it back against a really good Philadelphia defense. And watch him right here. See that jump cut and he gets right between the guys and this guy does not go down early. Once you stop Carlos Hyde, uh, it's Tyrod Taylor. And one of the things that you notice about Tyrod Taylor, he's got that nice touch. He really moves around in the pocket well. He's a very bright quarterback. He's great on the uh, bootleg. What he does really well is he throws equally as well moving to his left or to his right. Most right-handed quarterbacks do a, a great job of throwing when they run to his right. The other thing that Tyrod does, he is wise in when to tuck it and run. And he does a great job of finding the check down guy, as he did right there uh, with Jarvis Landry. Uh, he's also tough that when you get in his face, he's still going to deliver the ball. He's got a really nice touch. And, uh, and I, I just think that he's got that maturity that they need. And he's got the ball on the, on, on the money. And the guy that he loves to throw to is uh, Jarvis Landry. I've been really impressed with Jarvis. 
Jarvis Landry was a great get by them in free agency. He is very, very physical for a wide receiver. Kind of reminds me of Heinz Ward. Uh, and he's also talking a lot of trash. Whenever <laughs> he, uh, he has a completion, watch this. He's going to get in this guy's in the corner of the Giants here. He's going to get up and look at him. He's talking a little trash. He tries to get in the head of the cornerback. Very, very physical. Got that edge on. You know, he's, he's got that bit of nasty, like I said, Hines, he'll block in, in the uh, open field. The other thing he does great is he's great in and out of his cuts. And, uh, you know, you hear Mike Tomlin say he's quick to the tuck. When he catches the ball, he does a great job of looting, play, uh, uh, looting defensive backs, and then he just tucks it and runs. And he is the guy that I think from this offense you have to stop. Now, the one good thing about playing the Cleveland Browns offense is their offensive line. Not that they're a good offensive line, they're really not that good. They don't do a tremendous job of coming off the ball. They, do, they don't do a great job of protecting the quarterback. Uh, they did sign Chris Hubbard, which I think is one of their best guys. Joel Batonio is their left tackle, and he was a, a very good left guard. Notice that the pocket collapses. When you watch them play Philadelphia, they did a great job, Philadelphia did, of collapsing the pocket. And when you sh show them some stunts, one of the things that they don't do well is picking up the blitzes. And the Steelers do a great job of, of blitzing. And with Vince Williams, who times the blitz real well, that's going to be a big asset to the Steelers, and it's going to be a thorn in the side of the Cleveland Browns offense. Let's go to the other side of the ball. Uh, on the defensive side, look, this is a pressure defense. Greg Williams is the defensive coordinator. They play the wide nine. There are a lot of, much more, many more stars on the defensive side of the ball than there are on the offensive side of the ball. And the stud of this defense is Miles Garrett. We didn't see him a lot last year because uh, he was a rookie and he was dinged up. But this guy is big, he's strong, he's fast, and he's explosive. And you see it right there. Uh, he has a great bull rush, and he does a great job of coming off the ball, and he's got secondary moves as well. Right there, he comes to the inside on the guard and gets the sack. They'll move him inside, they'll play him outside. He got the safety. But watch this, he's coming from the left side there on the bottom of your screen or top of your screen, and he runs over the left guard. I mean, that is a great bull rush. He does a great job of putting his hands inside, and then watch it, he runs right over that left tackle, gets on the quarterback. That is the worst feeling. The worst feeling you could have as an offensive tackle is getting run over like this. He got run over about three or four times by Miles Garrett through the course of that game. And that is not fun for a quarterback, and it's even less fun for the offensive tackle. But the other thing that he does well is he's got a finesse move. This time you see him coming inside and getting the safety sack because once he sets you up with the bull rush, now you're going to set hard on him and he'll give you the okie duck move. In other words, it's more of a finesse move. So he'll come to the inside, throw that swim on you, and you're leaning forward, you're going to fall on your face. And then what you don't want to do is open the gate just like that, that left tackle did right now because you give him a two-way go. But then as you start looking at this defense, uh, you know, Greg Williams is the defensive coordinator and they are all about pressure, pressure, pressure. Now you watch the three linebackers and you got Joe Schobert, uh, Christian Kirksey, and, uh, and Jamie Collins. Now, if, as you watch uh, right there, or Schobert right there, he does a great job flowing. He has the instincts. He is made, he is perfect for this defense. All three of these linebackers are. Kirksey has the great instincts. He used to be an outside linebacker. It's very rarely that you see a good outside linebacking pass rusher move to the inside and play sideline to sideline. But Kirksey does this. Jamie Collins is the other guy. Jamie Collins has a knack for this game. He has a, a knack for making big plays at big times. Now, the, the reverse side of that is that sometimes Jamie Collins loafs. In other words, sometimes He's not playing every single play. Sometimes he freelances. He's the one guy out of the three linebackers that gets to freelance. I think Greg Williams says, all right, listen, Jamie, you see a play, go make it. And so this linebacking core is very, very athletic. And what Greg Williams, the defense coordinator, loves to do, he loves to blitz them. You'll see two, three guys blitzing the quarterback. And it's, if you go regular people or two tight ends, they are going to pack the box with eight guys. 
And Miss, that's the scouting report. The Sirius XM scouting report, Tunch. Thanks so much. We learn something every week uh, from your hours and hours in the <laughs> film room. For our Steelers Nation Unite members, our keyword today is opener. So head to SteelersNationUnite.com and enter the keyword opener. That's going to do it for today's show. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow at 4 p.m.